God bless you. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We give you all the adoration and honor. We magnify you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, Sister Doris. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We exalt, we magnify you. God bless you all. Sister Marlin. Amen. Brother Charles, you are a blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can we just share this on our walls as we get in? Invite your families, your friends, everyone that is available, let them come. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you all the glory today. We worship you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for life, for healing, for prosperity, for advancement. We thank you for your will. We thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence. We are not worthy to be called thy sons and daughters. But out of thy tender mercy, we are gathered in your presence, O Lord Father. Thank you for mercy. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rogo Robo Sakataba. Nekata Shikotobo Rekataba Santarababa. Blessed be thy holy name, O Lord Father. You are God. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be worshipped. Let your name be adored. Let your name be magnified. There is none like you. There is none that will be compared unto you. From generation to generation, you change it not. Lord, we thank you for life. We thank you for healing. We thank you for prosperity. We thank you for advancement. We thank you for what you are doing now. And what you will continue to do. Omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience God. Rakuto Sakataba. Lebaga Shikanama Sikorobo. Lakata Sikataba. Blessed be thy holy name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. What a mighty God that we serve. What a great God. We worship you, Lord. Lakuto Sakataba. Rabaga Shikotobo Likataba Sikadama. Oh, yes, Lord, we give you all the adoration and honor. We worship you. What a great God. Today is a great day to be in his presence. The word for us today is how men become great. You know, in the kingdom, the kingdom has really metamorphosed to the time and the place where we don't have to just go with knowledge that we have through reading the word of God and the through understanding revelation. It is time now to begin to go deeper into the ordinances and the principles that make men to become great in this kingdom. This is a kingdom where God is still the king. In the presence of God, the Bible says there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Lord, as we go into your word, the Bible says the entrance of the word bringeth light and understanding to the simple. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we hear and speak not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory to thy holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. What a mighty God. This kingdom is a kingdom that we go in through revelation, and through revelation we begin to understand the ordinances of God and the what God wants us to do. But it's not enough to just have revelation of the will of God. But also to have revelation of your assignment. Many times your assignment is hidden to you until you begin to dig deep. And once you discover your assignment, it doesn't matter what it is. You are fulfilled in life because your discovery is half of what you are supposed to do in life. Once you discover, you begin to recover. Your ability to discover who you are called to be, what you are called to do, is very, very vital in our journey in Christendom. So today I want us to know that there are things that you do as a person and it puts you in that place of greatness. Men are not born great. You become it. The Bible says, as many that receive Christ, then he gave the power to become the source of God. So if somebody does not receive Christ, it doesn't matter whether their father is a pastor. God created the heavens and the earth. Everyone was created by God. But as long as you have not received him, the power of sonship will not be given to you. It's an authority. 
But how do we become great? We don't become great because we are Christians only. But we become great by the specific assignment that we are doing. And every child of God is called for a territory. It can be your family. Your territory can be your home. And your ability to understand your position in that territory. That is the only way you can be able to be in charge of the territory that you are given. I told us yesterday how God gave Adam the Garden of Eden. And Adam was living there. He was in charge of the garden and not just the garden, but everything that creepeth upon the book earth. Both the birds and the, the, the animals and the, the things in the in the ocean and the seas. So Adam had authority, but the devil was the most anointed, the cherub. He was a cherub and a seraphim. When he was cast out of heaven, he didn't have territory. So the Bible says he moves through and fro. So he needed to have a domain, a place. So he has to go and treat man. Adam threw the wife, both of them came in agreement because I will not see just the wife because Adam also ate. So they yielded their authority to the devil. And since then, authorities have been held by demons, principalities, who just come to a place and latch on it and stay there. It doesn't matter who you are, how you are born there, they will fight you and fight you and keep you down until you, you are useless. So that takes us to the kingdom. How do men become great? Hallelujah. Men become great by knowing the will of God for them. By becoming like God. How do you become great? By becoming like God. Having the nature of God. By understanding the culture of the kingdom. And sometimes we can get ourselves mad into dogmas and doctrines. Doctrines and dogmas has nothing to do with the kingdom. Those are things that are rules and regulations that are made by men in different denominations or in different places. Some of the laws that Moses made to the Jews has nothing to do with God. But because of the way they were living, he was giving the laws. There are many laws in the Bible from the time that the Jews left Egypt than the Ten Commandments that God gave him directly. More than four, five hundred laws. So they were living under the disposition of laws. So your ability to keep those laws does not mean that you are pleasing God. You have to do the will of God. That's why we ought to know what God wants us to do as children of God. We have to know it. Your ability to understand your assignment is vital in this race. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. How do men become great? Understanding the process. That is also part of the principles of the kingdom. You got to know it. How do you know it? You don't know it just by coming as we do tonight. A lot of informations and revelations will be given. But many of them might not make sense to you now. But until you begin to submit yourself to the will of God. The only thing that keeps you far apart. There are two of them. I told you the, the, the highest word in the Bible. The most valuable word in the Bible, you can quote me anywhere, is obedience. And number two is sacrifice. And those two of them are catalysts to greatness. So number one, if you are not obedient, you can't even be a Christian. You first have to obey to this deity that we call God that you don't see. God is a spirit and they that must serve him, must serve him in truth and in spirit. Then you begin to sacrifice time and things. But when you get to the peak of what I'm going to talk to us about today, I'm not talking about obedience today or sacrifice, but all of them goes together. I'm talking about submission today. When you get to the place of submission, it's beyond sacrifice. Submission is that even if you don't want to do it, you just do it because you have to do it. That is the level where we, when you get there, there is nothing that can be withheld to you by God. Even secrets, God will begin to show you secrets. Many of you want to see God. You want to know the mind of God. Submit yourself to Him. Submit your will. Submit your activities. Submit your resources, your finances. Submit your life. Live for God. It might be hard at the beginning. But when you begin to wait upon the Lord, the Bible says, For them that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. There shall be an anointing to renew you, to upgrade you, to, to make you to become greater than you, have, you are expected or you are now. And you start to go into a different realm and manifestation. 
and God will begin to take you from one dimension to the next dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to begin to have some Bible readings today before we pray. I might be able to talk for maybe 20 minutes and we are going to pray. I want us to really pray today. The Bible says men ought to pray and not faint. But a prayer alone cannot do it because when you are praying and you don't know why you are praying. That's why the Bible says my people pray and don't, they don't get results. And they ask why. He said because they pray amidst. When you pray not according to the will of God, then you don't get that answer. I remember when Jesus prayed, the only prayer that was not answered by, by God for Jesus Christ. Jesus was the one that answers prayer. But when he was in the, in the nature of Jesus, which is man, he asked God, if it is possible, let the cup pass by. That prayer was not answered because that was not the will of God. So it's not just enough to pray. The Jews were praying and waiting for the Messiah. The Messiah came, they didn't even know. Because they were praying for their own things. A lot of Christians have latched into this multiple marathon prayer of give me and give me and give me. It has become, what do I call it? A selfish thing. Christianity has become so selfish that people are so in tune to themselves. Another brother or sister is right there down the road and going through stuff. And we are able to be able to help him either by information or by helping, by, by, by transforming him or by just talking to them. We won't do it. It has to be us or nobody. When you are a submissive person, you have yielded your own authority. You don't even have any right anymore. So we are talking about submission today. How do men become great? By submission. I told you, you talk about obedience, you talk about sacrifice, but when you get to the level of submission, you have gotten to the highest. Look at Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. We are beginning there. Hallelujah. Where did I keep this? Sorry. I'm looking for something here. I got it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. The Bible said here, thy word were found. Thy words were found. And I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing in my heart. For I, I am called by the name, O Lord, God of hosts. Thy word, I found it so. There was something that was missing. If you look at another translation where I read, I think NIV said, I have found thy word and I am eating it. That means you don't just find the word. We have many of us that say, we, we read the Bible. The Bible is the word of God, but we read it with the way we just go and read newspapers or read events or read stories. It doesn't make sense. But once you found something inside, then there's something like a revelation. A scale will fall off your eyes. Something just happened. You say, wow, I have read this place before. I didn't get anything out of it. Whoa, this is different. And then that's when the word will begin to become life and begin to make sense in your life. Hallelujah. I have found thy word and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. I have found it. So what happened all this time? Jeremiah was a prophet. Look at this. Is Jeremiah chapter 15. So from chapter 1, God has called him. So it's not like Jeremiah started following God at chapter 15. He has become a preacher at chapter 1, verse 4, when God was calling him, he said, get out from, because before you were formed in the womb. So he started preaching, but he never found that word. He never found him. He never got that revelation until Jeremiah 15. He said, wow, thy word were found. I have found that thing. Have you found the word of God? concerning you. Every child of God has something written about them. And until it is, be it is being revealed to you, not what somebody, what, what was written about somebody. You can read about somebody, great Christian out there, what God is doing in their life. Yeah, it can be what we call um, something that will give you a guide, but that is not you. Everyone has a pattern. There is something that God has patterned you for. Find out what that is. Don't waste your you have been here or else you will not make a man. You can go to heaven like Lazarus. Lazarus died a righteous man. He went to heaven. But he never made a mark. He never made an impact. The people that become impactful here on earth, they didn't just believe Christ and just go to church and walk bench. They did something. And it is not by doctrine or dogmas or by theological or ecclesiastical that you become like God. It is by pure revelation. Not what somebody told you, but what you have seen by yourself. 
God have a way of revealing himself to every human being. And when God reveals himself, God will be real to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. Ezekiel, the prophet. The Bible says, The Spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spoke unto me. Ezekiel began to preach. He was a prophet also. As God began to speak to him, he said not only did he did he hear, but something entered. There was a transfer of anointing, not just anointing, because anointing now will limit you also. There was a transfer of a burden. Let me put it that way, because the only way you occupy territory on earth, on this earth that we are, you must be a submissive person. If you cannot be under what we call, um, if you cannot submit under authority, you cannot have authority. So the only way to get authority is to submit. And the devil knows that. So he will do everything to fight you, to make you to argue the doctrine and the dogma and say, why will it be like this? But when you begin to search deep, don't even go by what anybody say. God can reveal himself to you. God is a spirit. So it's not something that you have to wait around and say, oh God, where are you? When you go into deep searching, I was talking to somebody today and he was going through some deep things and he called me from a very very far country about 15,000 miles from here in the Middle East and I started to talk to him you know a lot of things have gone so bad he wants to leave the country he can't he's like he's stuck now and he doesn't know what to do there's no resources finances to do it and uh, there are other things factors that are also involved so he asked me what to do and we prayed and prayed and prayed so today I call him back and say look if I say I have the answers, I'm lying to you, but I want you to pray. Can you be able to fast three days, no water, no food, nothing? He said, I can't do it. He said, because you know I have a big stomach. I said, I don't care how your stomach is big. It's not about you. I'm telling you what will change your life. You're telling me about your stomach, that you have a big stomach. I said, what can you do? He, he paused, he stayed. I said, look, because I can't help you. The thing you are going through is big. I've told you to pray and fast. But what I want you to be able to do is to enter into the supernatural and begin to question some things. Because when you have questions, then you begin to get answers. I say, sometimes it requires some great sacrifice. And how do you sacrifice? You, be, you become somebody that has killed the flesh. You die to yourself. So to be submissive is to die. Hallelujah. He paused for about three minutes. I was still on the phone. He called me, so I was waiting. He said, okay, can I eat fruits, cabbage and all that? I said, no, it's not part of the game. I said, you can drink water. He said, just plain water. I said, yes, drink water. I said, stay indoors. Stay for three days so that you don't lose the strength you have. He said, this is going to be tough. I said, yes, life is never easy. If it's not tough, you will not be able to get I said, you might finish that three days and God will not speak to you. But by the time you finish it, maybe on the seventh day, you are beginning to eat, then God will reveal himself to you. I say, it's not a guarantee that you, as you are praying, because you are not paying for anything. I told him, I said, the price that you, you for what you want God to do in your life has been paid. So he asked me, so if the price has been paid, why should I do this? I say, yes, because you have to live up to that demand. They say, hire something you are looking for. They say, demand is something that you have to do. It's not a price. I say, the price for your success, the price for your deliverance, the price for God to change your life is already paid on the cross of Calvary. So, so that nobody will say, oh, because I fasted for one year. That is what God, why God did that. No, your fasting didn't give you what you wanted. What your fasting did was to kill your body. To translate you into the spirit, to make you to grow faster. Maybe you have been in kindergarten for 10 years. God said, I want you to get to the college in the spirit. And you refuse to grow. When you begin to subject your body into some marathon torture, the body will yield for the spirit man to begin to grow. That's when you start to hear and understand God. And the man Paul said, I have never heard something like this before. I said, yes, because it's rare. Nobody will tell you. Even people that have gone through it, sometimes they didn't know how they became. But if they trace their step back, there are some things that you have to do. What you are contending is spiritual. You cannot be a physical person to go into the supernatural and win a battle. You have to be in the spirit also. How do you become a spirit? 
You die to yourself. Your body has to die. Then your spirit man will come alive. Then he paused. And he said, I'll call you back in two days to prepare myself. I said, there's nothing to prepare. Think about it. If you want to do it, you do it. That was how the call ended. Why did I bring this? There are some things that you are asking questions. If we, you have not had a burden in your life, maybe you just live for bread and butter. You want just to have a house. You want to be able to take care of your kids. Those are basic things. It is always available in the kingdom. But when you become, when you want to be a person that will change what is happening in your society, what happens in your family, generational causes and yokes and covenant, there are powers that are holding those things. You can't walk in and just say, give me, then give it. I want us to see something. When Jesus went into the grave in the book of um, Psalm 24, hallelujah. You know, God has a way of giving us um, a word. I want you to see Psalm 24. This is Jesus Christ himself, the almighty God. He said, lift up your head, O ye gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting door. Those doors have been there. They are strongholds. I want you to see the book of Psalm 24, verse 9. If you look at from verse 1, the Bible starts to tell you that the earth is of the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in it. So God owns the whole earth. God owns the world. The world is a system. The world is not a place. The world is a system. That's why we have United Nations and the United States. You have Canada. You have, you know, these are systems that are created. The, the portion of land that is there and the people is the earth. The Bible says the earth is of the Lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the sea and established it upon the floor. There is nothing holding the earth. The earth is just on top, on, 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 on top of the sea. There is no pillar. God have it in his hand. But I don't want to stay, dwell there. But I want us to see verse 9. Verse 7. Let's start from verse 7. It says, Jesus Christ now, who is the word, went into hell and began to speak to deliver men that were locked of destinies, territories, families that have been put in everlasting doors and chained close against them and kept them there. And the Bible said the angel of God shouted in verse 7, lift up your head, O ye gates. There are gates in, in the spirit. Many times we don't know. There are doors that are ancient. 300 years, 500 years have been there. 2,000 years, those doors are there. The keys are rusted. But you have to go and undo it. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. And demons and the principalities began to shout. Who is the king of glory? The Lord. Then the angel replied. He said, the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. And he said in verse 9 again, lift up your head, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. That the king of glory come in. And the, the principalities say, who is the king of glory? And the angel answered back. The Lord of hosts. When you are a host, you are the landlord. You are the owner of the place. So he reminded them that even hell was created by God. He said, the Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. So the ancient doors, you can't just wake up and say, oh, I'm tired of what is happening in my family. It has to change. No, they don't give it to you like that. You have ancestral forces, familiar spirit. When you hear about um, bloodline demons, these things are, have been there 1,000 years, 2,000 years. They know the first man, how the man went astray and committed whatever he committed and gave open doors to the devil. Look at, we are still talking about the Adamic sin in our dispensation. Do you know how many years Adam died? But many times when we go to, go to deep forgiveness of sin, we ask for the original sin. You know, many of us ha have not known that even in your dispensation that the sin of Adam is still a deterrent sometimes. There are some places you want to enter. You have to go back to Adam to begin to undo things. You pray against the sins of the original. The original sin, that's what we call the Adamic nature. Then you talk about the inherited sin, ancestral forces, familiar spirits, bloodline sins, the things that have been in your family, the thing that is common to you, to your family, things that attract your family, that is inherited. Then you talk about personal sins. Sins are in three folds. And until you begin to undo them in those order. And sometimes after you have prayed and fasted, you have to submit to the will of God. Because now, your being is submitted to the devil. Some people will say, oh, how can I hear God? How have you been hearing the devil? Who told you what the devil is saying? How did you become an agent? Because it is, because there's information. There are deities and spirits 
and powers that are holding you as a person. Even though you are a pastor, even though you are a Christian, but there are some things that refuse to go. That's why Jesus talked about forgiveness of sins in the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. I want you to see something there. There are some things that need to be removed. You see, if we confess our sin, it's just to forgive us our sins. It's faithful and just to forgive us. Then he talked about the second part and to cleanse. There's a lot of cleaning. When you talk about cleaning, you are talking about deliverance. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. King James said, and to clean us. The cleaning, when you clean a house, you don't just and say the house get clean and the house will get clean forgiveness can just happen in a, in a second but when you are talking about transformation it takes removing of doors removing of things that have been there begin to pull them apart and take them apart that is the only time the bible said and the angel said that the king of glory shall come in are you going to let him in today how do men become great by submission to absolute submission it takes it takes a person that had been able to get into the spirit to submit to that kind of authority if you look at exodus chapter 3 when god called moses if you read from verse 4 the bible said god called moses and said moses moses and moses said here i am and god began to introduce himself to him even though moses have heard about god a lot of christians have heard about god you are in the kingdom you have become a christian you have heard about jesus you have accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. But for you to do your assignment, for you to be able to be effective, for you to take territories back, God have to show you another side. There must be another part. That is when Moses was wandering in this wilderness for 40 years. 40 years he has been carrying sheep and entering this bush. He has never seen this mountain called Herod. He has never been to that mountain. That mountain has been there for 40 years. God hid that mountain to him until that day. He came to that same mountain and God began to call him in verse 4. And the Lord, the Bible said in verse 3, Moses said, I will turn aside. No, 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 let's go back. In verse 2, he said, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked and behold, the bush was born with fire and the bush was not consumed. Moses now said, I'm going to turn around and look. What kind of thing is this? In verse 4, and the Lord saw that he turned aside to see. God called him out of the mix of the bush and said Moses Moses and he said here I am and he said drawn not near hither put off your shoes from thy feet for the place where you are standing is a holy ground this place he has been wandering in this wilderness for 40 years he was a, sh a, a shepherd in the house of Jethro his father-in-law who was a priest also of the Midianites but Moses God hid that thing to him God have to allow this man to go through the world, search the world, eat the world. He has done a lot of things. He has become this man until he grew up to that place. God revealed himself to him. And from there, his assignment changed. This was a man that had decided that Egypt, I'm, I'm done with Egypt. I'm not going back there anymore. I'm just going to stay here with my wife and family and live a normal life and just die. Some people, God will call them here. They will say, no, I'm not going. God will call somebody else. You can still die and go to heaven, but that is not, you will not fulfill here on earth. Hallelujah. Your ability to answer the call is different. When God called Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah had been prophesying. I want you to see something. Isaiah had been a prophet. But, something happened. His brother, Uzziah, was the king. And God killed the king so he can be able to refocus Isaiah. The Bible says, in the year that King Hosea died, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted, and his train filled the temple. This is I guess, Isaiah chapter 6. So, from chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, Isaiah has been prophesying. He has been doing the work of God, but he has not become his, 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 his himself in the spirit. He has not become the version that God wanted him to be. And he has been full of lies. He has been saying what God did not say. Because the Bible said, he said, my mouth is full of lies. I'm a man of unclean lips. And God said, who shall I say? God called him again. He has already been called. God has to call him the second time. I want you to see, when he, his, his cousin died, that was when God called him. 
So, we don't know what happened between him and Uzziah, but probably Uzziah's position, and because he's a family member, was affecting his, his calling. God have to take the king away, because it was specific. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord upon, seated on the throne. If you look at, in, 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 in verse 3, he said, and one cried unto another. He started to see the angels of God. He saw the cherubims and the seraphim. That's where Isaiah discovered that they have six wings. If you look at verse 2, it, it said, above, it stood in the seraphim. The seraphim, we talk about the devil being a seraphim and a cherub. He said, the seraphim, each one had six wings, with twin of covered his face, and, and, the, and the twin covered his feet, and the twin covered Twin did he fly? So he has two that cover his face, so he couldn't see their face. Another two cover their their feet, and the other two cover. They use it to fly. Six wings, one angel. He saw the throne of God in the heavens. Hallelujah! And another cried. He saw another angel cry, "Holy, holy, holy, holy! Is the Lord of hosts? The whole earth is full of His glory." And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Look at the description of what he saw. And verse 5, he said, Then I said, I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. He was the prophet. But he discovered that his mouth was not the mouth that God had been using. He was using his own mouth for something else. And God had to change that mouth that day. He was a prophet. He was prophesying. This is, he has been trained, he has grown up, he has become a prophet, he has been commissioned, he has gone into the field. This is chapter 6 of his writings of what he has been doing. That is when he saw God. Submission to the will. And the Bible said in verse 6, no, he said, I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew away the seraphim. Look at verse 7. Then he laid it upon my mouth. He took, I want you to see 6. Then flew the seraphim unto me, having a live coal, live fire, live coal in his head, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. So they went and took fresh fire. Isaiah's fire was getting cold. His love was waxing cold. God took a fresh fire and brought it and put it in his mouth. And verse 7, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sins purged. Then God called him, verse 8. He has been called before. He has begun to preach. He has answered the first call. But he has not stepped into his assignment. In verse 8, and I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who shall go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. So what have he been doing? He was a prophet, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. But until chapter 6, he couldn't see the Holy of Holies. I want you to desire a higher calling. It's good to be a Christian and live a normal life, but when you want to make an impact in your community, in your family, you have to desire a higher calling. It comes with some demands, not a price. The price has been paid. The price is the blood of Jesus upon the cross of Calvary. So we can't pay any other price. The Bible said there shall be no other sacrifice that will be made except that which has been made, which is the blood of Jesus Christ. But the things that we do are demands that will be demanded of you as a person. And if you are ready to go that route and to be able to step into it, then you begin to see some dimensions of movement. That's why the church, churches are everywhere, but we don't make impact. I remember in those days, I remember clearly in the 70s, just Two, three, four Christians can enter a place. In those days, they used to call them. Um, some of them were called scripture union. Some of them were assemblies of God. In those days, they come into a community. The community will be on fire. Two people, one, three. Now we have churches that pack thousands of people. There is no power. Anointing is there. People are getting healed everywhere. People are getting cars, buying houses. The devil is not moved by anointing because he's, he was the most anointed. I told you in Ezekiel 28, when you read about the devil, read from verse 12 downward. He has all that, so it doesn't move him. As long as you don't have power over territory, the devil is not afraid of you. That's why the government can wake up and say churches should close, and every church will close. No man of God even will challenge or even say anything, because we don't have territories. The territories have been yielded to a man. 
It is time to go back. I remember in those days when a king says something, they have to go and consult the prophet to see if the prophet is in agreement. If the prophet refuses, then the king will not allow that thing to happen. If then if it's a wicked king, there will be a contention because the prophet will say something else and the king will say something else. And now, in the spirit, God will allow what the word of the prophet to come to pass. Elijah came out one day after praying. He said, there should be no rain anymore until I say so. And the king said, who are you? He said, well, I am Elijah. If I be a man of God, there should be no rain in this land until I say so. And the heavens closed. The king didn't know until one year passed, two years, three years, four years, five years. Ah, people are struggling. People began to eat other people's children. No crop, nothing. They went and begged him. And he went back on top of the mountain and said, I hear the sound of abundance. And by this time, there was no rain. These are men that have contacted spirit. They are no more human beings. They are in the supernatural. They are territorial authorities. They are principalities here on earth. That's how you can decree a thing and it shall come to pass. So Isaiah said, here I am. Send me. And that is when he became effective in his calling. Let's talk about Jesus Christ. The King of the Kings and the Lord of Lords. Rabobo Sakataba, Likata Shikataba. We worship you, Lord, we exalt you. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus was saying, when they asked him, he said, Master, teach us how to pray. He said, when you pray, pray in this manner, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. I want you to pause in verse 10. Thy will be done on earth. What is that? For the will of God to be done, you have to submit to that will. It doesn't happen if you don't submit. You can read it every day. Many of us can recite it. We know how to talk about the Lord's Prayer. But if you have not submitted to the will of God, that will cannot be done in your life. Even though you know about it. Jesus was God himself in form of man. The Bible introducing it in John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So he was God personified. But Jesus as God has to submit to God. Because when he was born here on earth, he was stripped of his position. Not really stripped. I wouldn't say God took it. He submitted it. He yielded it out. So for 30 years, Jesus could not make impact on earth. Even though God was on earth. Until he went to the mountain. First, he went and submitted to his cousin, John the Baptist. And John the Baptist baptized him. And Jesus was led by the Spirit in Matthew chapter 4 into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He submitted unto the, the, the authority of the Holy Spirit. Submitted unto the authority of John. John even said, no, I can't do it. Because John had seen him in the Spirit. I said, what? But Jesus knew, if I don't go through this places, I will not get the territory back. The territory had been yielded by Adam to the devil. Jesus needs to take it back. The territory of the world, which is the earth. He has to submit to every government that was available then. Then he went to the mountain and the Bible said to be tested. The Bible said in Deuteronomy, God cannot be tested. Thou shalt not test the Lord thy God. But God tested God. The Bible said, and the Spirit of God led him to the wilderness to be tempted by the, by the devil. And after he has fasted 40 days and 40 nights, do you think that the, the fasting was what delivered him? No! The fasting is for his spirit man to be alive. Do you know that after he has fasted, the devil did not come the 1 to the 10, the 20, the 30, the 35, the 40. The devil did not show. When he has finished fasting, he has prayed and thanked God, say, wow, I am do I've done it. He was about to go. He was very happy. The devil showed up. And how many of you haven't seen yourself after you have gone through this marathon of spiritual exercise? Then you'll be tempted and you fail. The devil will come to purge your faith. The devil showed up and started to begin to purge his faith because now he was the prototype of the second Adam. Jesus was God in Adam's body. He said, If you are the Son of God, turn these stones to bread. The first Adam fell because of food. Now the second Adam, when he fell because of food again, he was very hungry in the man. He was very, very hungry. He needed to eat something, anything. But he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of God. He overcame that temptation. The second one, the third one, said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Then the angels of God came and ministered to him. He came down and began to preach. 
People began to follow him. But he knew that the job had not been done. His anointing was high up there, but the devil is not scared of anointing. So many, many times, Jesus had the opportunity to go all out. He will retreat because he was waiting to get the territory back. Territorial powers don't, they're not, they are not scared of anointing. Anointing can only keep them a little bit afar, but the, the, the activities will be there. So only demons that you can cast out, these are damning gods, small powers. We're talking about territorial authorities. A man like Daniel prayed. They held his prayer for 21 days. Daniel that will be in his house, God will tell him what he was doing. Inside his room, he was sleeping. The king had a dream. God came and told him the dream of the king in his room. This is the man that conversed with God, talked to God. Secret things are revealed to him, but his prayers was withheld for 21 days by authority that was in Persia. I want you to understand the power to get authority. How men become great is by submission. So when Jesus, when the time was come for Jesus to die, the church has begun to grow. People are coming from abroad. Famous people are coming. The Bible says Jesus was not moved by that. In John chapter 12, Jesus told them that this is the time to die. Hallelujah. He talked about it. He said, except a corn of flour fall into the ground and die. John chapter 12, verse 20 and 25. We read it yesterday. He said, he abided alone. Even though people came from Greeks to see him, and Philip was very happy. Philip told Andrew, who was one of the high hierarchy in the forerunners of Jesus Christ. The, the, uh, Andrew came, they told Jesus, say, wow, the Greeks are here. They were so excited. It's like we've been in church one day and one of the celebrities from Hollywood just come because the Greeks are smart people. They are people from Harvard or some, some professionals. But Jesus didn't want to see them. He said, don't worry. Except a corn of flour fall and dies, he abided alone. But if he dies, he bringeth forth much fruit. His eye was on the, on the cross. He was not distracted by the positions that will, or the kind of um, accolades that he will get after he has come to see the Greeks. Or oh, probably they will invite him to the Greek, the ancient Greek, and celebrate him there. Those are not why he came. Hallelujah. But the Bible said Jesus stayed until it was time. He was in Gethsemane. And he began to pray. The next day he would die. Look at Luke chapter 22. If you read from verse 42, I'm just, I'm just trying to cut all these things. So we don't have to waste time. We have to pray. The Bible says in verse 42, Jesus said, he prayed by 12 o'clock. God didn't answer him. He said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass by me. He prayed by 3 a.m. In fact, he prayed every one hour. So he prayed until 6 a.m. In the morning about 6 a.m., the Bible says he came back. He said, Father, if you are willing, take the cup from me. Yet, not my will, but your will be done. The moment he said that, the Spirit of God came. And he went down and called his disciples and said, the hour has come. He submitted himself to death. His ability to do that was what gave us Christianity as we see today. What was this, this, this was what gave us the earth back that we can be able to be able to enter into the supernatural and take over territories and speak over. Jesus in his ministry had only 12 men that he poured himself to. Those 12 have their own disciples. That's how they have 120 men. He was not after the crowd because the crowd will fail you. Once you have one scandal as a pastor, the church is gone. He knew. When they, told, when, they, when they brought a lie against him, the whole church disappeared. But his disciples stayed. He made sure he poured himself. He was not running after 100,000 people are gathering here. Some people have gathered men, gathered people. Where are they today? If you, they don't know what you know, when there is storm of life come, they will go. That's why you have to teach your people and you select them, not everybody. The Bible says, Jesus said, this is a mystery. It's not for everybody. It is not for them to know, but for you. To understand the mysteries of the kingdom. So he, the demand was that he has to go through that. That was the prize for the earth. Thy will be done. That was it. He submitted to death. He sacrificed himself. Time will not permit me to talk about Abraham. That God said, get out of, get out of your father's house. He got out 25 years. God was telling him the same thing. God was training the man. Training the man to become tough. 
At, tw at, at 25 years after that, 100 years he walked, he had a son, Isaac. He was very happy. He is building all his life on Isaac. And when Isaac was 16 years old, Abraham was 116. God called him back and said, Abraham, give me thy son, thy only son, Isaac, the one that you love. Hallelujah. And Abraham was devastated. Genesis 22, verse 2, God said, take thy son, thy son, Isaac, whom thou lovest. God knew that he loved this boy so much. God said, I want him. This is after 41 years of following God. God wants to take him where spirit thread. God has to put him in that place that he is. And when Abraham succumbed and submitted to the will of God, God now swore and said, after he has done what he asked him to do, finish, just go and read Genesis 22. The Bible says God swore. He said, I swear by myself that in blessing I will bless you. And every man that cursed you is cursed. Abraham became a household. He, Abraham is a system in heaven and on earth. Even Jesus referenced Abraham. The Lazarus died and he was in Abraham's bosom. This a man has become a system on earth and a system in heaven. It doesn't just, you don't just attain such height. You have to be a man that have submitted your life. Because Abraham, to him, at 116 years, how can he come back from this? He has to die to himself. To be able to enter into where God can use him. Are you ready to get into that place? To tread where spirit is tread. Whereby your body is nothing to you, your resources is nothing. There is nothing that moves you anymore. You are ready to forfeit everything, to be able to see God. If you cannot enter into this realm, you cannot, you cannot, when I say, you cannot be great. You can go to heaven if that is your goal. Lazarus went to heaven, but he still stayed in Abraham's bottom. But for you to make impact on earth, you must be a man that understands spiritual warfare and territories. Because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. They are principalities, and you have to become a principality. Not just by, 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 by your ordination of a son of God. Because the Bible says, as many that receive him are given the power to become the sons. Just by ordination, you are a son. But you have to be a son in the spirit. The sons of Skiphas were sons. But when they saw demons, just common demons, they couldn't fight demons. The demons say, Paul, I know. In Acts 19, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? They don't have authority. You have to, I'm telling you, for your family to be liberated, you have to be a man that seek authority diligently. You have to be a man of, I told the first thing, a man of obedience, a man of sacrifice, a man of submission. That's the highest level. That's why God told man in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, Jesus was saying, he said, wives, submit unto your husband as unto the Lord. Submit. When you are submissive, you don't have your own will or word. Like Jesus said, thy will be done. He said, wife, submit unto your husband as unto the Lord. Because we are the bride of the church, of, 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 of Christ. The church is his bride. He is the groom. The church has to submit. But why is it that the church is not making impact anymore? Because we have not submitted. We are still after ourselves. Men are full of themselves. We talk about ourselves. We are always coming to God in demand. Say, God, give me this, give me that. It's not why we become Christians. We are not Christians to, to ride on cars. We are not Christians to have houses. God did not create us here to be able to just come and show forth his glory. God created us to be territory owners. Possessing territories in the kingdom and possessing territories in the physical. The Bible says God called Abraham when he met him in form of Melchizedek. He said, blessed be Abraham, possessor of heaven and earth. For you to be able to enter into that realm, you are, you are a dead man walking. I told you about Elijah. A man that went into the brook and stood there for three and a half years was eating only bread and water from the, from the raven. The raven was feeding him for three and a half years. Because he said there should be no rain, and there was no rain. That same man came out and said, bring all the bad prophets to Mount Carmel. And let's make sacrifice. And when they sacrificed, they, nothing happened in the evening. He said, pour water upon the altar, rebuild the altar. He said, the God that answered by fire, let it be God. And God came down and licked everything. Both the sacrifice, the trenches, licked the wood, burned down everything. And he said, kill all of them. 
That man was not a human being. He was a spirit. Are you ready to get there? Because it's easy for us to say, God, the God of Abraham is my God. Abraham's blessings are mine. Are you ready to put up that demand that God wants from you? Take thy son, thy only son, and offer him up onto that altar as a living sacrifice. Can we be able to fit into that place? Even demons know this. That's why the Bible says the, 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 the children of the world are wiser than the children of the kingdom. I'll show you something. The king of Mobite, this king was not a child of God, did not believe in God at all. They had a war with Israel, and God have told Israel to all three wipe them out. Second Kings chapter 3. Kill everything living, kill human being, man, children, women that are pregnant, kill them, kill the children in their womb. God said, wipe out everybody, kill both the kings. And Israel went and waged war and was killing them. They were down to about 700 men. The king came and said, what does the God of Israel eat? He understood sacrifice. The man took his son, 2 Kings chapter 3, 27. Then he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead. So the man took the heir of the throne. That means there was no heir anymore. And put him on the altar, in the fence, in front of the, the Philistines, in front of the Jews, and killed him. Mazakataraba. This is a demon. He knew that this battle has been won in the spirit. So as they continued to fight, they were bringing soldiers. They were losing. They were losing. They were down to 700 men. The king came to war. The mobile king took his son, put him in the altar, killed him. Sacrificed him to God. Even though he did not believe in that God. The Bible says when he put him on that wall and killed him. And there was great indignation against Israel. And they departed from him and returned to their own land. God caused Israel to go back. Say, don't touch that man anymore. An unbeliever. You have to submit. I don't know where we are going to have time to do a proper, a proper uh, prayer conference. Maybe three, four days we just go in and bury ourselves and pray and begin to search the world. But I want you to develop this habit. Personal exercise. Go into the spirit. Be a warrior in the night. Spend two, three hours crying unto God. God told Moses, I've heard the cry of my people and I have come to deliver them. Now you go to Pharaoh, tell him to let my people go. That they might serve me. I want you to thank God wherever you are. Lekata Sokotobo, Rabaga Shikadama. We don't have time. Every time we come here, we look at the time it's just going. But we have to move forward. Hallelujah. With what you have received today, you can go to the next dimension. Jesus Christ, after after he has died and resurrected. Look at Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. The Bible said, this was not said about him when he was here. But the moment he submitted to death, the Bible said, having this and principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. He triumphed over principalities on the cross. He made a public show of them. That power has been given to you. It was when Jesus has resurrected in Matthew 28 verse 18, he came and said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. All power. For him to become the Christ, he has to die. It takes a lot of submission to die. Having made public show of the devil, disarm principalities. You don't just get there by saying, I'm a son of God, I'm a child of God. Yes, the sons of Skiphas were sons, but they couldn't cast out demons. It takes a man that has been in the spirit. The demon looked at them and said, yes, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? They were sons, but they were not having the right spirit. They were vagabond sons. All power in heaven has been given unto me. All power in heaven and on earth. There is no power left anywhere. All power, all, has been given unto me. I give it to you. Go. Baptizing men in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always. You don't just receive such things by 
wishing it or just going to church and say, oh, Father, oh, Lord, I thank you for giving me authority. You go and stay in and just stay in and let God be God in your life. Father, move into us. Remove every removable. It is only in this altar where you submit yourself and into devotion. It's not a time to demand for anything. You don't pray and ask for nothing. You say, God, I am there for you. Have mercy upon me. Isaiah went into such prayers in Isaiah chapter 6 and he saw the throne of heaven. He saw the seraphims. He saw the cherubims. And a fire was put upon him, fresh fire. Ask God, give me a cool, a fresh fire. From the altar, the golden altar that is in heaven, there was a fire burning in that altar. They took charcoal there and put it in his mouth. He said, for I'm a man of unclean lips. Tell God, I am not worthy to be called thy son or daughter. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy. And this prayer is not one we just pray here and it ends. I want you to continue it. Let God be God in your life. Let God be God in your family. Let God be God. Many of you, your family DNA will change when you decide for it to change. Not by wishing that your ancestors will choose, stop pursuing you. Some people are still killing goats and cattle for their ancestors. Some people are still going to the grave of their grandfather to pray and beg their grandfather to leave them so they can get jobs. Until you go and fight in the spirit, that is when you detach from ancestral forces, familiar spirit. Many people, the same way your father died, that's where they died. The same way their mother died. The same sickness that killed their grandfather is killing them because they don't understand territory. The devil will never give up any territory until you go and take it by yourself. All power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. O Lakata Sikataba, Lord, have mercy upon us. Wash us today. O Lakata Sikataba, give us the ability to stand, to be your sons and your daughters in the place that we put us. Everywhere we represent, every anywhere that our foot is tread upon. You have given us a possession. We thank you for placing us in this location in Lilburn and wherever you are connected or positioned on earth. I want you to ask God, Bakata Raba, to begin to remove whatever that will keep you bound. Sometimes the devil has telepathically endued you with his mind. There are spirits and powers from your ancestors, from the people you are working with, people you have been with, spiritually or physically, soul ties that you have with men you have slept with or women you have been with. That are possessing you ask god to remove those things in the name of jesus christ that the real man that is in you will come out when bible said if any man confess their sin i will forgive them and cleanse them ask god to begin to cleanse you from every unrighteousness you remember some people can be alive but they have not been loose when lazarus came back alive he was still having grave clothes jesus looked at him and said lose him and let him go if they did not lose him even though he was alive he will not see far he will not be able to uh, uh, do all his assignments because he was still tied. A lot of people are tied to their, to their family altar. People are tied to their mother or their father. People are tied to their community. People are tied to their husband or their children. They are tied to something they don't even know. They are walking around. Dead people that are living. In the name of Jesus, let God be God today. Begin to untie you from every shackles. Everything that is caging your mind. Paul said, casting down imaginations and every high thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that exalt itself above the knowledge of Christ. Every high thing, everything that is exalting itself above knowledge of God, in my mind, cast it down in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not the time to start to say, oh, I bind this, I bind that. Lord, take care of me. Remove every removable. Change me as a person. Use me to make a name for yourself here on earth. I stand out of many that are called. Paul and this man, John the Baptist, his father was a high priest, but he, he refused to stay in Jerusalem. He refused to continue in the family lineage and the lineage of the business of the priest of the family. And he went into the wilderness and stayed there and prayed until God told him you are a, a voice that cries. If he never did that, he might still die and go to heaven, but he will never make a mark on earth. He said, I am the voice that cried in the wilderness. And the spirit of Elijah was given to him. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Today we pray for everyone that is sick in this country. Now we don't talk about coronavirus again. It's a, another kind of, the devil is just playing with our mind. But Lord, we stand in this country and we decree and declare as the sons and daughters of God, let there be peace. Let there be peace. Lord, let there, there, there be dialogue concerning the death of Floyd. Hallelujah. George Floyd and all the people that have been killed 
Aubrey, the one that was shot here in Georgia, and the lady that was shot in Minnesota also. Lord, whoever is hurting now, and the families that have lost people in this coronavirus, COVID-19, we are standing in agreement with them. Lord, we pray that they, you give them the heart to bear the loss. It's a lot of tragedy. Things are happening. People are just celebrating, dancing. They don't know what is happening. The devil is at, at rage. He's coming out because he has seen the handwriting on the wall. Jesus is about to come. We have to stand. We have to stand to make a mark. I remember in those days when one Christian is, one Christian is in a neighborhood. The neighborhood knows. But now we have everybody claiming to be pastors and bishops and apostles and deacons. No impact. The devil is not even afraid of the church. In fact, there is no church cannot even speak anything and it happens. Pastors have declared and declared something in the spirit. And the devil will smile because they don't have authority. Today, Lord, give us a voice again. Give us a voice. Jesus told them, tarry in Jerusalem until the spirit is come upon you. Tarry you in Jerusalem. They stayed there for 50 days praying. They were not thinking of offering. They were not thinking of where they are going to preach. They were not thinking of anybody to see them. They were not thinking of their family, their wife, their husband, their children. Everybody, they just stayed and prayed for 50 days until they were able to contact spirit. The spirit of God came upon them. Holy Spirit divine, come upon this nation again. Give us voice again like people like uh, John Wesley that came to this country and brought revival. Catherine Kruman, great voices in the past that you have used to John G. Lake that brought revival into this nation. Let the power of God come back. Reform this church. Reform the church. Reform the church in the world. Let there be a reformation. Pastors have grown fast, but the territories have been lost. We are losing territories everywhere. I remember in those days in Nigeria, the Equa Church was everywhere in the north. Assemblies of God. Today, we have yielded the north to the, to the Muslims. We are not even fighting anymore to get it back. The Muslims don't preach. They don't even go to church like we go. But they, 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 because they, they believe in something and they believe in it, they begin to take territories. Territorial power, that is where the battle has been drawn today. Not about how many people gather in a place. Territory. Lord, call me back and again. Give me a voice. Here I am, send me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for everyone that wants to give their life to Christ today and those that are listening to my voice anywhere. I pray, O oh Lord, Father, that the power of God come upon them. I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe with my heart that you are my personal Lord and Savior and that you died for my sins. And I confess with my mouth that you are my God and my Savior. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.